Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our youth summer service. On behalf of Andre, Easter, and myself, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you for spending some time around the Word of God with us this morning. Before we start, I would just like to thank all the young people who are participating in our service today. Thank you to Charlie Macbeth from Balerno for doing our Bible reading, for Katie Dunleavy from the West Kirk for leading us in our first prayer, to Harry Thompson for the music, and then especially a huge big thank you to Heather Merriman, the family worker at Curry Kirk and Juniper Green Parish Church for our very special message today. May God bless this time we will now be spending together and may he grant all of you a very special summer. Let us worship God with our call to worship from Psalm 145. The Lord is great and is to be highly praised. His greatness is beyond understanding. Beloved, I greet you in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are always calling people to spread love and share your words with others. You call ordinary people to do the most unexpected things. You need so many people to do your work here on earth. Help us always to be ready to listen to your call and to know that you will give us gifts, courage and energy. And and enthusiasm to do the things you, you need us to do. Help us to overcome the worries, doubts and anger that Jonah had and to be ready to respond to your call like the disciples did when Jesus called them to follow him. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. from the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verses 1 to 17. One day the Lord spoke to Jonah, son of Amittai, and said, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and speak out against it. I am aware how wicked its people are. Jonah, however, set out in the opposite direction in order to get away from the Lord. He went to Joppa, where he found a ship about to go to Spain. He paid his fare and went aboard with the crew to sail to Spain where he would be away from the Lord. But the Lord sent a strong wind on the sea, 
and the storm was so violent that the ship was in danger of breaking up. The sailors were terrified and cried out for help, each one to his own god. Then in order to lessen the danger, they threw the cargo overboard. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone below and was lying in the ship's hold, sound asleep. The captain found him there and said to him, What are you doing asleep? Get up and pray to your god for help. Maybe he will feel sorry for us and spare our lives. The sailors said to one another, Let's watch, draw lots and find out who is to blame for getting us into this danger. They did so, and Jonah's name was drawn. So they said to him, Now then tell us, who is to blame for this? What are you doing here? What country do you come from? What is your nationality? I am Hebrew, Jonah answered. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the land and the sea. Jonah went on to tell them that he was running away from the Lord. The sailors were terrified and said to him, that was an awful thing to do. The storm was getting worse all the time, so the sailors asked him, what should we do to you to stop the storm? Jonah answered, throw me into the sea and I will calm down. It will calm down. I know it is my fault and you are caught in this violent storm. Instead, the sailors tried to get the ship to store, sure, rowing with all their might, but the storm was getting worse and worse and they got nowhere. So they cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord, we pray, don't punish us with the death for taking this man's life. You, O oh Lord, are responsible for all this. It is your doing. Then they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and it calmed down at once. This made the sailors so afraid of the Lord that they offered a sacrifice and promised to serve him. At the Lord's command, a large fish swallowed Jonah, and he was inside the fish for three days and nights. Good morning. Have you ever heard a story that seems so ridiculous you weren't sure if it was true? Recently on YouTube I've seen a few videos about talking to your younger self or trying to explain the pandemic to your past self. And it's funny to watch them and to see all the things that have become normal over the past year that would have seemed crazy and unbelievable at the beginning of 2020. And if someone had told us then what things would be like now, we wouldn't have believed them. And this story about Jonah seems like one of those ridiculous, unbelievable stories. Jonah was a prophet of God, a messenger for God, but he was not perfect. When we first meet Jonah, he has been tasked with taking a message to the people of Nineveh, a wicked city full of wicked people. And instead of obeying God, Jonah tries to run away from God and get as far away as he can from Nineveh. And the story only gets stranger from here. I mean, imagine someone comes to you and says, did you hear the story of what happened to Jonah? God told him to go to Nineveh, but he tried to run away from God. And he ended up on a boat where he slept through a wild storm that tossed the boat in every direction. Then he got tossed overboard by the ship's crew and the storm suddenly stopped. Then the craziest thing happened. He got swallowed by a gigantic fish and he survived. That can't be real, can it? It might not seem so crazy if we've heard that story before, but imagine or remember back to what it was like hearing that story for the first time. And sometimes things happen in our lives that don't seem real. We face circumstances that seem unbelievable. Like for the next year, you'll mostly have to stay at home and you'll socialize over screens or at a distance. And you won't be able to hug your family members that don't live with you. You'll go to school at home. You'll work from home. You'll only be allowed to go for a walk once a day. That's mad. Yet we face situations where we feel trapped or scared or can't see a way ahead. But when we have faith in God, we can rely on God always being with us even in the strange and unbelievable circumstances that we find ourselves. 
And what often amazes me in Jonah's story is just how active God is in the events that happen. Did you notice? It's God who told Jonah to go to Nineveh and what message to take. It is God who caused the storm when Jonah tried to run. It's God who makes the sea wilder when the ship's crew fiercely try to row back to shore. It's God who calmed the water when Jonah was tossed overboard. Now I'm not saying that every difficult and bad situation that we face is because God is causing it. But even in those situations, God is there. And Jonah knew that God was there. Jonah realised that he couldn't run from God because God knew where he was and was with him. Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and, and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Notice that God doesn't say, I'll be with you when times are easy. Or I'll wait until you're panicking before I come close. Or I'll just watch from a distance. God says, don't be afraid. I'm with you and I will help you. God is with us in every situation. And I wonder if when Jonah was thrown in the water, if he thought, what now? Was there time for him to consider climbing back into the ship? Did he wonder if he was going to drown before anyone could rescue him? What was he thinking as the giant fish came towards him? In the end, it was God who sent the huge fish to swallow Jonah. And although being swallowed by a giant fish seems a pretty unfortunate occurrence, it was most likely the thing that saved Jonah and it brought him back to God. This past year has been a challenge for all of us. And yet the pandemic experience has not been the same for all of us. Looking back, we will all have different memories, different stories of what stood out to us, of what we struggled with, of what we enjoyed. But as Christians, I hope that we can all say that we knew God's closeness and presence through it all. I hope we can say that despite of, or maybe because of the hardships that we faced, we looked for God and found him to be our rock and our constant presence. Many people have searched for God throughout this year and have turned to faith, looking for peace and hope. We never know what is in store. But we know that God's plans and purposes are far greater than ours and beyond our imagination. In Jonah's story, we hear that God has a message for Nineveh. And so we might think that this story is all about trying to get the Ninevites to change. But in fact, Jonah himself has a lot to change about his attitudes and his knowledge of God's. And so we see God at work in Jonah's life, changing him, growing him. But there's another group of people affected by Jonah's awful circumstances too. And that is the group of men on board the ship. We don't know much about these men, but it says that they cried out to their own gods. So we know they didn't worship the same God as Jonah did, the same God that we do. But when they meet Jonah, and when they see what he faces, what disaster his running away has caused, they are introduced to the one true God, the almighty, all-powerful God, who can command the wind and the seas. And in verse 16, it says, the men greatly feared the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. As we are caught up in the storm and the sea and wondering what will happen to Jonah, these men on the boat are awestruck in wonder at God. 
When we face bizarre and unreal and difficult circumstances, often God uses those times not only to bring us closer to himself, but to bring others near to him as well. Others who need to know who he is, who need to see his power and feel his presence and know that he can be trusted. When we have faith and cling to God during challenges, we are demonstrating to other people that we believe in a God that can be relied on and who can give us comfort and hope. So when you face unexpected and unusual circumstances, look to God. He will be with you and he can use those situations for his glory. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you are with us in every situation. No matter how easy or difficult it is that you promise that you will be with us. God, I pray that you would help us to remember that you are with us in every situation and that you long to help us. God, I pray that we would let you, that we would turn to you and ask for your help. And that when we seek you, we would find peace and hope and comfort. That we would know your presence. And God, we pray that it would draw other people to you as well. That our faith would shine for you. That our faith would tell other people of how great and how good you are and how reliable you are. That God, every situation we face, every circumstance uh, that, that happens in our lives would point to, to you would help us look to you, would help other people look to you and that your glory would be shown. Amen. If after all that, you still think that the story of Jonah is a fishy tale, have a wee look at this. Home against the odds. <laughs> after surviving an ordeal straight out of the storybooks, 
Fisherman Michael Packard was diving for lobster 45 feet down in Cape Cod when his day took an unexpected turn. I was just about at the bottom and I just felt this truck hit me and everything just went dark and I could just feel just, just hard stuff all around me like and I just thought, did I just get eaten by a white shark? And, and then I said, no, I don't feel any teeth. And I said, oh my God, I'm in the mouth of a whale. In fact, it was a humpback whale. And for 40 seconds, Michael was stuck in its mouth. He's swimming and I could just be in his mouth and he's swimming and I'm like, this is how you're going to go, Michael. This is how you're going to die. Losing hope, he thought about his boys and the rest of his family. All of a sudden, I saw light and I just could feel his head shaking and I just got thrown out of his mouth into the water. There was just white water everywhere. As his friend pulled him into the boat, he was in serious pain and thought the whale had broken his legs. In fact, he'd dislocated his knee and had other soft tissue injuries but was otherwise unscathed. For son Jacob, a text from his mother was an unexpected interruption to lessons. Your dad was, was diving and a whale just, I don't know, attacked him, ate him. Luckily, the whale decided it didn't want Michael for breakfast after all, and he's already thinking about when he can dive back into work. Emma Birchley, Sky News. So now we know about another man who was swallowed by a whale and then spat out again. Only this time it happened in 2021. But you know, the stories in the Bible are not there to teach us anything about biology or science or geography. It's there to teach us important life lessons. Lessons about faith, love, relationships, about how to live life. These stories take us from darkness into light. Just like the man in the news club and Jonah, were in deep darkness but eventually their stories ended with them seeing the light. The stories about God and his relationship with people in the Bible can also take us from darkness into light. So let's read our Bibles this summer so that we can understand life a wee bit better and live and the light of God. May the late light nights remind you all that God's love for us is like a light that never stops shining. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, thank you for a faith that is more of an adventure than a declaration, more of a journey than an arrival, more of a question than an answer. May we live our faith that takes us and shares with us experiences yet unknown, that opens our eyes to what is yet to be, that stirs our souls with longing and intent, Thank you for a faith that is open to the new world, willing to journey, that dares to believe that not all things stay the same, but that you, O oh God, are in the changing. May we journey like Jonah to the places you call us, to stand with the poor and the hurt and the homeless and proclaim your love through our living. May we pray for peace in this world by living as peacemakers. May we pray for homes for all by welcoming the stranger in our community. May we pray for the poor by choosing to buy justly. 
May we journey like Jonah, with grace in our living, hope in our travelling, justice in our sharing, and love in our being. Amen. Thank you for worshipping with us this morning. Receive now the blessing of God and go out in his peace. From Nineveh into the world, we are called to proclaim God's grace. May we go now and share that grace through our living with each other. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit will be with all of you now and forevermore. Amen.